This is Plant-Based Briefing, How Behavior Changes the Theory of Planned Behavior, by Joy McLeod at Faunalytics.org. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate articles related to healthy, compassionate, and sustainable living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's article is from Faunalytics. They're a nonprofit providing animal advocates with data to understand how people think about and respond to advocacy and provide the best strategies to inspire change for animals. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How Behavior Changes the Theory of Planned Behavior by Joy McLeod at Faunalytics.org. Our new fact sheet looks at the root of behavior and how animal advocates can promote positive lifestyle changes via attitudes, perceived behavioral control, and subjective norms. Intentions. If you think about your own behavior, for example, cooking a vegan meal or going to the gym, it is often preceded by an intention. Simply put, an intention is an aim or a plan to take a certain course of action. In this case, the intention or plan to cook a vegan meal. Now you may be thinking, doesn't this saying go something like this? The road to hell is paved with good intentions? And you're right, folklore has caught on to the modest relationship between intentions and behavior. This is because intentions, especially good intentions, are often vague. However, intentions still explain 20-30% to of the variability in behavior, so they are an important consideration with regard to changing behavior. If we take intentions one step further, there is a specific type of intention— implementation intentions that are particularly helpful when it comes to changing behavior because of their specificity. In short, implementation intentions are if-then plans that help promote behavior change. In particular, they help us overcome obstacles. Let's think back to our intention to cook a vegan meal. Imagine you get to the grocery store and they're out of a key ingredient you need. An implementation intention for this scenario, which you form before ever leaving the house, may be as follows. If I get to the grocery store and they have sold out of meatless chicken strips for my stir-fry, then I will get tofu or tempeh instead. As we can see from the above example, if-then plans facilitate behavior because they're specific and they reduce mental effort, especially when facing barriers to a desired behavior. What predicts intentions? Three main factors contribute to behavioral intentions. Attitudes, perceived behavioral control, and subjective norms. Importantly for animal advocates, strategies can be used to influence these three factors to help increase intentions and, in turn, behavior. Let's break each of these factors down. Attitudes. Do I want to do that? Attitudes are evaluations about whether something is positive or negative. We develop attitudes about people, groups, institutions, consumer products, social issues, and yes, even behaviors. Attitudes make people more likely to behave in certain ways. Many animal advocacy campaigns have focused on changing attitudes toward behaviors like eating meat in order to reduce the consumption of animal products. How can you apply this knowledge in your advocacy? What can you do? Inform others. Providing new information can change people's attitudes toward a given behavior. For example, informing people about factory farm conditions might make their attitudes toward animal products more negative. However, as many animal advocates know, informational campaigns don't work on people who are too defensive or avoid the information, which unfortunately describes a lot of people. Further, our recent report linked here about new vegans' motivations and influences revealed that learning about farmed animal sentience was helpful in maintaining a vegan diet only in combination with other influences, for example, learning about health benefits. Because of the nuanced relationship between attitudes and intentions, it is important to work on shifting perceived behavioral control and subjective norms as well as described below. Perceived behavioral control. Do I have the ability to do that? Feelings about how easy or difficult it will be to perform a behavior are also important predictors of intentions. This is not to say that people do not engage in behaviors that are difficult to start or maintain, But believing that a behavior is under your control or that you have the ability to do it encourages you to put in more effort, be persistent, and create strategies. For example, an independent young adult may have higher perceived control over going vegan compared to a young adult who is dependent on a guardian, even if they both desire to change their behavior. This is because the independent young adult does not rely on a guardian to provide food for them and may therefore feel more capable of going vegan as the food in their home is under their control. What can you do? Be an example to people close to you. Showing the success that comes from a given behavior can increase other people's perceived behavioral control. 
For example, showing your social media followers how healthy you have become due to a vegan diet may help motivate them to do the same. It also helps to show how simple a behavior is to engage in. For instance, sharing simple vegan recipes or tips and tricks for dining with family and friends who eat meat can increase people's confidence in their ability to make the change. Subjective norms. Do other people want me to do that? Norms refer to social pressure to behave a certain way. That pressure can occur either because others are behaving that way or because you think others believe you should behave that way. This means understanding our target audience's beliefs about what others do or think with regard to a given behavior. What can you do? Promote the use of if-then goals. Setting mental reminders for yourself. For example, if I am eating with my family, in combination with the desired behavior, for example, then I will take vegan dishes rather than meat, is a cheap and helpful strategy for turning intention into behavior, and it can be particularly helpful in a situation where there may be norm-based pressure to do something else, for example, if your family eats a lot of meat. This strategy encourages people to create a concrete goal for how to respond to a challenging situation. For a more thorough discussion on subjective or social norms, visit our blog entitled Leveraging Social Norms for Animal Advocacy linked here and the accompanying fact sheet. In a nutshell, as advocates, we have the ability to influence people's attitudes, perceived behavioral control, and subjective norms by 1. informing others, 2. being an example to those close to us, and 3. promoting the use of if-then goals. These in turn can impact people's intentions to behave in ways that reduce animal suffering. An easy to share fact sheet. At Faunalytics, we're always striving to make our work as accessible and readily usable as possible. If what you've read above is compelling, we've compiled a condensed version of this info in an easy-to-share fact sheet below. Clicking on the share button at the bottom of the graphic will allow you to easily spread the word on social media. If you'd like to download a static image of the graphic, you can click here and save it to your mobile phone or desktop computer. You just listened to How Behavior Changes, The Theory of Planned Behavior by Joy McLeod at Phonolytics.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. And as always, I put a link to the original post in the show notes so you can find that infographic from there. And I just recently learned that when all the show notes post to YouTube from Libsyn, my podcast hosting service provider, none of the links work in YouTube. So I apologize for that. I don't think there's a way to fix that yet. But if you ever do want a link to the original post or details in the show notes, just jump over to plantbasedbriefing.com, click on episodes on the menu, and you'll find them all in there. And I don't normally read details about the authors, but I happen to notice this one, and maybe I will start reading some of these sometime, but this is interesting. The author Joy McLeod is an MA student at Carleton University in Canada. Her research examines the psychological factors that influence the recovery and rehabilitation process among individuals living with spinal cord injury. Joy hopes to expand her impact as an animal advocate beyond her personal network by applying her research skills as a volunteer with the Phonolytics team. I just love that. I love that there are so many people with so many skill sets doing fantastic things to help animals. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.